think mistakes were made. <laughs> back from hell to ruin your life on the hottest day we've had in August. We had like no summer and then out of nowhere, summer has come. I am coming to you from the orange room today because all the other rooms that I normally film in are south facing and it is way too hot and all of the blinds are shut. So it's dark in there. Hence I can't film. This room is north facing and it's still so freaking hot. Um, I come to you bearing. This is my uh, washing basket. This is where I take my laundry up to the line on. And it's full of books. Oops, I just dropped one. It is full of books. So I'm gonna do a August TBR. Um, this TBR is brought to you by, uh, I can't impulse spend right now. I can't like emotionally spend because I need to buy a new car. I had all these plans. It's like I put in saving money for a while to like do a bunch of stuff for my garden. And just like stuff around the house and then I was sitting there the other day and I was like I can't do any of that stuff now because I have to spend money on a rental car and then a real car and I was devastated so in a fit of peak I decided to open up my library app and <laughs> go through my book wish list I was like embargo is lifted no more library embargo I am going to request every single book I've been waiting to read and if they have it I'm asking for it. So I requested 25 books from my library, um, which I don't know why I did that. I was just feeling <laughs> impulsive, and so I did it. Um, 13 of them are here. There are still 15 that are on their way to me that are on holds, like I'm waiting for them. Um, I have already read some and returned them since I did this. I think I did it like a week or two ago. So I'm still making progress. So I don't know, will I make it through all these books? Considering that the first quarter of this year, I think I read 23 and this is almost that many, probably not, but I'm gonna give it a go. Um, so I'm gonna go through and talk about what I'm gonna try to read this month. I think it might be doable because for this month, um, at work, I compress my hours so I don't work on Wednesdays anymore. So I work slightly longer days the rest of the week. Why am I drinking tea when it's hot? The tea isn't warm. <laughs> Does that make it better? I don't know. Anyway, let's go through my books that I'm reading. So the first book is a book that I am, oh, I'm nearly done with this. Um, this is The Return by Rachel Harrison. A lot of these books are books that other booktubers have uh recommended like some of my friends are on booktube some of them i remember who recommended it some of them i don't i think this was recommended by michaela from michaela reads or brooklyn from brooklyn's library this is from michaela or brooklyn which one of you is this i don't know sorry guys uh but this is really good so far i will do a review of this i think this is going to be in my uh staycation vlog uh because i was reading this on my home staycation um but yeah so this is a book about a group of friends. Their friend Julie goes missing. She shows up like a while after. I won't say how long because I feel like it's real interesting how long she's been gone. And they're so happy to see her, but she has come back wrong. What is wrong with Julie? I don't know, guys. What's wrong with her? And they're trying to figure out what happened to her because she has no memory of where she's been while she was missing. And she's just so weird so they're trying to figure out what is going on with julie what happened when she was missing and also just their friendship is so interesting because at points it's so fun and then at other points it is very messy and very toxic very good i recommend it it's spooky it's spooky yuki yuki and fun so there's that next is celestial bodies by Joka Alharthi, Harthi or Harthi, I don't know. So this is about three sisters in Oman. It won the Man Booker Prize in 2019. So I think this has been on my TBR for quite a while. Um, but it's translated by Marilyn Booth. This is about three sisters living in Oman. They, two of them marry one out of a sense of duty, one because she's like has a broken heart and it's like I need to get married and the other is pining for her boyfriend, her beloved, sorry, because I don't know if he's a boyfriend. It just says beloved. We don't know what mysteries are in these covers, um, um, who is living in Canada. So this is about a family and it's talking about the story and the history of the people of Oman, but through the lens of 
this family and their life and interpersonal conflicts. I love a family drama. I love a family drama as a way to probe into deeper cultural issues. So I really hope that I'm gonna enjoy this. I mean, look at that little sticker. Look at that little sticker. So hopefully this will be good. This is also from before they changed the name from the man booker to the booker. So is this a little relic of history? Is this a little historical relic? I don't know. I'm gonna read it though. Next, I'm pretty sure this was recommended by Brooklyn or Sarah. Oh my God, watch it be neither of them. Sorry, I really, I should write these things down. I didn't write these down. So Vita Nostra. This is not normally the kind of book that I would read, but I was particularly interested in it because it's translated fiction and because they said that it's told with a distinctly Russian voice. I was interested in the beginning part of this plot, but the second bit, I'm like, I'm not sure if it's gonna work for me because it's like a magical school vibe. So basically, let me say her name. So Sasha is on summer holiday with her parents and then a mysterious man approaches her and he asks her to do like a strange task. And as a reward, he gives her a gold coin and Throughout the summer, he keeps giving her more and more gold coins. And then at the end, he tells her to take the coins to this place and use them to pay for tuition at, let me get the name of the school right, the Institute of Special Technologies. So at this school, she discovers like it's not ordinary. The books are in like, she can't read the books. The lessons are really difficult. And there are penalties for not succeeding at the school, which means that like your loved ones are harmed as a result of your failures at the school. Um, but so it says it's a complex blend of ma adventure, magic, science, and philosophy expressed through a distinctly Russian voice. So, and it's speculative fiction. So I am interested in this. I don't, like I said, it's not normally something like, I'm not a huge magic school reader, but I'm really interested in the beginning with the mysterious man. And because it is like, because they're talking about like science and philosophy, I'm hoping that that's going to kind of balance out maybe some of the aspects that I'm not going to be super keen on, but I'm still excited to give this a try. And I, I think there's a pretty good chance that I will like it. Um, cause most, yeah, I think there's a pretty good chance that I'll like it even with those kind of reservations. But yeah. Okay. Next, this is Gold Mountain Blues by Ling Zheng. Now this is interesting because it says Ling Zheng on here, but this author, I read um, one of her books earlier this year, Where Waters Meet, and on that book, her name is written as Zheng Ling. So I'm not sure which one is correct. I don't know. Um, but this is uh, one of her works that is translated. So Where Waters Meet, which I read in May, is her first book in English. The rest of her books were written and then translated into English. So this is another story of the diaspora. It begins in 1879 in China. There's the height of the Opium Wars. A man leaves his family behind and travels to Canada. He wants to make a life for them. He wants to be able to send money and then hopefully bring them over. And then in 2004, one of his descendants is picking through her family's history um, after some, like finding through secrets, she's gonna travel back to China to try to piece things together and learn more about her family, her family of origin. And again, this is a story with some family drama. So it's across five generations and just talks about like the struggle of immigration and building a life and stuff. So in a way, I think it might remind me of Where Waters Meet, but also I think it's definitely going to be very different because obviously the one of the key players is a man where his waters meet was more about women and a mother daughter connection. I do think that this is a common theme in this author's writing because that is her story. She immigrated from China to Canada. Um, I believe in the, I think she said it was in the sixties. I don't remember. I, I remembered it from where when I reviewed Where Waters Meet and it's just fallen out of my head. Um, so yeah, I'm really interested to go back to that well and kind of see this sort of story from her, but from a slightly different lens. 
Where Waters Meet was beautiful, I have no doubt that I'm going to love this book and cry a lot reading it. Next, okay, this book, Looking Glass Sound. This is about, I did like start reading like the first few pages of this and I was like, oh yeah, I'm gonna make this my night read and the other one my day read. And then I got really into The Return and so this one was abandoned. This will be my second Catriona Award this month. I already read and returned another one of her books, Sundial, and I'm gonna review that in my staycation vlog. Um, this is about a guy, Wilder Harlow. He goes there to write his last book is for revenge on his friend who betrayed his trust he stole his unpublished memoirs and he's been he published them he never told him why he did this why he backstabbed um and then a mysterious woman shows up and he's like who is that woman and he's like living on this isolated island and he's like i'm losing my mind like is am i hallucinating i'm seeing weird stuff but interesting I talked about this book in like I filmed at the end of my video last week I was like oh maybe I should film some of the books that I got from the library that week um, and I had like a whole rant about the cover of this book because I don't like the cover of this book the American cover this is recommended by Michaela by the way I mean I remember because in her video she had the American cover and it was beautiful it was gorgeous I will put the American cover on screen here and this is the UK cover and it is BS! I have a whole rant that I did about how ugly this cover is. If this video doesn't end up being too long, I will insert it here. Mm, is, is it booty? It is. It's a bit book blobby, almost. Like, these, this bit is okay. You're like, ooh, what's that lighthouse over there? And then it's just a big book blob. And then if you look closer, look at this. Actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna rip into this cover a little bit. It's very incongruous. Let's talk about this. Actually, this is a derail the video let's rip apart this cover i actually hate it now that i'm looking at it okay i like that it's green and gold so it got away with that but then i looked closer look at this top portion okay why is that like that that looks like a photograph that almost looks like a photograph doesn't it and then there's a little house here but then why is he a clip art man why is he clip art man hmm that just looks like you pasted a guy there you obviously took a lot of effort to do a good photorealistic house and barn and then you've got your water that's green and goopy and then you've got google image man outline hmm judging judging and then you can see on the bottom we have the same but woman google image woman and google image woman is doing that traditional female company gesture of clasping her hands it looks like and also she's clearly wearing high heels and a mini skirt on a rock on the edge of the ocean i have emotions about this but i'm still excited to read the book i'm excited about what's in the book okay next this is a memoir it's michael k williams uh scenes from my life i wanted to oh and with john sternfield Feld. So he had uh, some ghostwriting support. Michael K. Williams is an actor. I don't know. Is the picture showing? Look how handsome he was. He died uh, in 2020. Was it 2020 or 21? Yeah, 2021. Um, he is like a really gifted actor. You might know him from like The Wire, our community, or uh oh yeah he was in the night of he was in love calf country i'm just opening it now but yeah so this is just a memoir about his life uh growing up in new york city and then the start of like his career as an actor i was really interested in this book because it was being advertised a few years ago on a podcast i really really love called last day i highly recommend that podcast it's really emotional but it's really really good it was a really good ad for it. It sounded really interesting. I think it's going to be a really interesting book and kind of sad because he really, he fought hard against his addiction and in the end he lost that fight. But um, a really interesting person. Also, he used to be a dancer. I think that's really cool that like somebody who's like that beautiful. Oh, there's a picture of him with a child. Being kind to a child. Oh. So I'm excited to read this. So yeah. Next is Young Mungo uh, by Douglas Stewart. I'm really excited to read this. I, so, <laughs> the reason 
reason that I picked this book was because, and there's another book that I found for the same reason. I was in Sainsbury's and I saw this book cover and I was like, this is an unusual book cover. One, because it's a photograph and two, because it's two men passionately kissing. And I was like, what's that about? And so I picked it up and I liked what it said in the dust jacket. And I was like, but I don't want to buy a book right now. So I'll see if they have it at my library. And they did. So I requested it. And this book is about two boys, Mungo and James. They are Protestant and Catholic, respectively. They live in Glasgow. And if you know anything about me, you know that Glasgow is my favorite city in the UK. I would love to move to Glasgow, but it is apparently too far away from my wife's family. So instead we live in the north of England instead of in Scotland, where I want to live. Anyway, um, so yeah, so Glasgow, yay, yay. Um, there's two boys. Yeah, so they're living in um, like sort of a more deprived area, living in really rough conditions. Mungo's brother is a gang member. They become friends. They are into pigeon keeping and they hang out in like the little area where one of them is keeping his pigeons. And I think that urban pigeon keeping is really fascinating. I love to talk to people who are into pigeoning. Um, so yeah, so they fall in love and they're trying to like navigate this sort of hyper masculine environment and like a very violent environment and protect themselves and be together. Mungo then gets sent away to remote lock with two men. His mother sends him away for this fishing trip, but it's something weird going on and how's he going to be safe and how's he going to get back to his love and keep themselves safe from Mungo's brother and the environment that they're in. I feel like this is going to be beautiful, heartbreaking, compelling. Um, and I haven't read a lot of queer male books um, at all or this year. I just know that one of my favorite books that I was, you know what? No, I'll mention that in another video. But yeah, I'm hoping that this will fall in the vein of another book that I really enjoyed that had a queer male protagonist. Next, Luster by Raven Leilani. So this book, I don't remember where I saw this. This wasn't recommended by anybody. I think this was just like, if you liked this, you might like this kind of thing when I bought a book re like a few year months ago. Um, so this is the story of Edie. She is working in an all-white office. She's a black lady. If you didn't guess that from the cover. Um, she's working in her own way office. She's got a dead end job, dead end romance life. And then she starts an affair with a married guy. What's his name? Eric, who is white, a white guy. He's an archivist. He lives a suburban life. He is married and they have an adopted black daughter who doesn't have a lot of black influence in her life. And she becomes enfolded within this family. And it's the story of like her going through that finding identity finding her place all that stuff i think this is gonna be interesting i think it's gonna be messy i like a bit of mess it's been a long time since i had a messy read but i also think it's gonna be really moving and like upsetty spaghetti vibes because like you've got sadie smith blurbing and you've got carmen maria carmen maria Macado blurbing so i think it's gonna be like emotional and deep but also messy uh, so not just pure fun trash, but yeah, excited for that one. Next is Ugly by Anita Bhagwandas. This is recommended to me by my mom. Um, she like, I think she saw it talking about it on TV. So giving us back our beauty standards. So Anita Bhagwandas is a beauty writer and this is a book just about kind of our own self image, where beauty standards came from, how to unpick them and how to kind of find your way out of that and try to embrace your own sort of relationship to beauty and ugliness and redefining it. I'm really interested in this for like the discussions on beauty standards and how they affect women, their origins and like how they kind of were shaped over time. It looks like it's going to be really interesting like just having a look at like the chapters like weight and ugly, the weight of ugly, fixing ugly, old and ugly. I'm really excited about old and ugly because people are just so like more than I've ever noticed are like terrified of aging. And I don't understand because I thought that the whole point of being alive was to keep being alive as long as possible. And if you keep being alive as long as possible, you will get old. 
like being old means that you've succeeded why is it scary to be anyway but yeah so I'm really excited about this um yeah I think it's gonna be fun next is this is the other book that I saw at Sainsbury's and I was like oh what's that do they have it at my library and I'm really excited for this so this is people person by Candace Carty Williams this is a family drama as you know I love a family drama and this is the story of one, two, three, four, five half siblings. Um, there is a tragic event. They don't really have a lot in common. I don't think they're very close, but they're brought together after a catastrophic event. They all reconnect and they reconnect with their deadbeat dad, deadbeat daddy. Uh, and then apparently things start to get complicated from there. I don't know what I'm going to feel about this. I hope that it's fun. I hope that it's um, like emotional. I hope that I have like sweet feelings, you know, family getting together. But I'm mainly reading it because like I said, I like a family drama every now and again. So we'll see. People person. I'm interested to see how that relates to this story because there's so many people in it. So like, who's a people person? Is it the dad? Is he a people person? But he's actually just a people porker. I don't know. I'm going to cut that part out. So the next book is Wake, The Hidden History of Slave Revolt by Rebecca Hall. And it's illustrated by Hugo Martinez. I've already read this. So I'm going to do a review of it in another video. This is great. This is a graphic novel. And it's like I said, um, it's nonfiction. And it's a graphic novel about a historian researching the hidden history of slave revolts. The illustrations are really cool. They're really powerful and moving. There we go. Here's one where like the hands, I like this book because there's lots of like hands reaching up out of like, uh, like documents and, and like smoke and stuff. I just think it's a really cool motif that like, features throughout the book yeah but this is a really good book it's really emotional it's really informative i highly recommend it i'll do a longer review i've done a longer review in another video that's going to be out next week uh but yeah good one so see look i've already finished one i want to take back next this is uh something that was definitely i definitely rec remember who recommended that and this and it was michaela um, from Michaela Reed. So this is Death in Her Hands by Otessa Mosh Feg. Um, so this is about an older woman, which I'm excited to have a protagonist that is not 12 years old. Um, <laughs> oh, how nice does this cover look in this orange room? Maybe I should put hot pink in this room. Anyway, so this is a story of an older woman, Vesta. She's going for a walk in the woods and she finds a note that says, her name was Magda. Nobody will ever know who killed her. It wasn't me. Here is her dead body. And she becomes obsessed with this note, obsessed with finding out what happened to Magda. Uh, I'm really excited to read it. Kayla said it's like a weird book, more atmospheric and like a meditation, more like a meditative story than like necessarily a plot driven story. But I'm excited to give it a go. And also she said Otessa Moshfeg does really good sort of unlikable characters. And I love unlikable characters. I love disliking a protagonist. So yay. Next and last but not least is Pine by Francine Toon. This is a book that I has been on my like list of, oh, I should read that. I should read that for a long time. And it's because I love this cover. It's so cool and interesting so this is a story set in the scottish highlands a little a woman called lauren and her father niall they live in a small village in the highlands surrounded by a forest my dream although i don't want to live in the highlands uh because i don't want to not have anything shipped to me if you live in the uk you know every time you buy something online they're like we don't ship to the highlands or they're like it's 95 years to get anything there sorry um so yeah so on halloween night so this is a this is supposed to be a good spooky book but then it says general on the side like it says the genre is general but it's spooky so i don't know how spooky it's actually gonna end up being but basically on halloween they find a woman who stumbles down the road 
Niall, the dad, helps her get back to her house. And the next day, she gone. They don't know where she is. And the Lauren is trying to find where she is. The community is really secretive and really strange. And then she's like, what's happening? Like, it seems like people maybe know more than they're telling her. She doesn't know why her father's like being weird about it. And then suddenly another teenager goes missing. So they're like, what? Something is definitely wrong here. And so she's just trying to figure out uh, what is going on? Why are these people going missing? What's happening here? What's the mystery? So I'm excited for that. I'm excited for some fun mystery vibes. So that's it. These are the books that I'm going to try to read in August. And I know a lot of people would be able to do that. Uh, but I don't know if I will. I'm going to give it the old college try though. I'm like I said, I'm almost done with this one and I finished this one. So technically I only need to read one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven of them. That doesn't seem crazy, right? These, most of these don't look too long. I will finish four of these books. <laughs> Have you read any of these books? What did you think of them? Comment below. Do you want to read any of these books now? Let me know about that. Have I been deceived by any of these summaries that have been on these dusk jackets? Have I been sold a bill of goods and I'm going to actually read it and be like, you know what? They said this book was about a magic school, but it's actually about communism. I don't know. When am I going to find out? Who will tell me? Um, yeah, so that's it for this week. Thank you so much for coming and spending some time with me to discuss my insane plans for the month. Um, I will be reviewing these probably as I go rather than trying to save them all up to do one big review at the end of the month like I normally do because that's not going to be feasible unless we want to sit for an hour. I'm going to go now and make some dinner and try to cool down and I will see you guys another time. Bye!